why some people are traveling abroad for hair transplants. So to save money, Freddie and Caprielle traveled internationally for their surgeries. Caprielle spent $2,043 for her transplant in Turkey. Things can really go wrong. Hi, and welcome to yet another episode of Hair Talks by Terra Medical, and my name is Dr. Joshua Chong. I've been thinking a lot about this lately. We've got patients flying in from all over Southeast Asia and sometimes even further to seek us for consults on hair restoration. And I believe there will be an equal number of local patients that are thinking about flying abroad to get their hair restoration procedures done. In conjunction with the travel picking up after COVID, this episode is meant to delve a little bit into navigating the global hair transplant market and how you can seek out the best option for your hair treatments. Now it's no secret that illicit global hair transplants are going on everywhere. When you hear people going for a hair transplant in certain country and they tell you they've been quoted 5,000, 6,000 grafts or one US dollar a graft, you know, bells start ringing, raising red flags. This could be a black market clinic. So how do you differentiate between a black market clinic if you're seeking treatment overseas versus a clinic that actually upholds all the highest practice standards set forth by the International Society of Hair Restoration Surgery. So a black market clinic would be a clinic that a doctor might consult you or you may not even be a licensed medical practitioner. But after the consultation, the entire process is then delegated to someone else who may not be medically trained or may not be adequately credentialed to perform surgery on you. In the context of traveling overseas to get your procedure done, sometimes it is lost in the language barrier. The communication may not be adequate for you to understand that the doctor is barely just consulting you with your surgery actually being done by technicians. It's important to differentiate who does your surgery. Now, according to the ISHRS best practice guidelines, everything that uh, involves cutting of a patient's skin or removing of a sample should be done by a licensed medical practitioner, depending on the jurisdiction that you're practicing in. For example, the US makes some exemptions for physician assistants to perform part of the procedure, taking over the role of a hair transplant surgeon. But that's just barely the legal aspects of it. Understanding the performing doctor's experience level, how familiar is he with different ethnicity of hair, how many cases does he do per week, and his overall contributions in you know, international societies or as well as the scientific community of hair restoration surgeons uh, would be a factor in your decision-making process when you're consulting him for your procedure. Qualified and credentialed surgeons have undergone the necessary knowledge and practical training to understand every part of the hair restoration process and they can advise you on both medical and surgical aspects of the hair restoration journey that you're about to embark on. The same cannot be said of hair transplant technicians or nurses. You would definitely want to know who you're speaking to and what is his credentials before committing to get your hair restoration done by this particular person. You can find a list of accredited physicians on the ISHRS and ABHRS websites, the Global Authority on Hair Restoration Surgery and Science. If the doctor that you're intending to visit is listed there, you can be more or less assured that he upholds good practice standards in accordance with his signature on the membership form for ISHRS. It is very important at this juncture that we mention our fantastic team of technicians. Our technicians are trained and certified and qualified to do hair transplant assisting work. But a technician is not allowed to perform the surgery on their own. So if you're seeking treatment overseas and you encounter a situation where a technician is delegated the entire process of harvesting your hair follicles and implanting your hair follicles, this might be a contravention of best practice standards. So in summary, if you're looking for a hair restoration clinic, be sure to look out for good marks of recognition amongst the hair restoration society such as the ISHRS, the BAHRS, the ABHRS, and you'll find many more of these societies that govern their own jurisdictions. The doctor should be knowledgeable and be able to answer your questions with regards to your concerns about different areas of 
repair which you are looking to restore or even discussing medical options to help to optimize your hair and prevent further loss in the future. A lot of clinics in other jurisdictions will be able to show you before and after comparisons and they actively advertise their results online. However, in Singapore, we are not allowed to show any before or after comparison photos or any after treatment photos. If you do happen to chance upon an advertisement online that shows you before and after results of hair restoration, these are not MOH licensed clinics. So before you commit to getting your procedure done with this clinic, assume it's licensed, do make a trip down to the place, to the physical premise of it, and ask to be led to walk around the clinic to make sure it's sanitary, um, the premises are clean, and they have all the necessary facilities should an emergency happen. As medical tourism is on the rise, and we experiencing in Terra as well as, you know, we see a lot of patients that come back from overseas, it is paramount that you do your due diligence in selecting your hair transplant practitioner. Uh, do understand that cheaper is not always better, and I wish you all the best in your hair transplant journey. If you like this video, remember to share it with your friends, give us a like, subscribe to our channel for more content on hair loss and hair restoration. Leave any questions in the comment section below and we'll see you next time.